Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about client shampoo. This is why I wanted to talk about this this morning. So, when somebody gives me one of these, that this is like Amazon, right? They're, they don't know about these products. Yeah, there is uh, there is ingredients on it. I will give it that. Um, but And it, it is vegan and cruelty free and all that. Either way, so she didn't know anything about this product. She handed it to me and was like, is this good to use on my dog? I was like, you know, I didn't want to be like, oh, you just, you know, it's kind of pointless kind of thing. Um, she wanted to use it because it had lavender in it and she was worried about wet skin. And I'm like, you know, if this makes her feel better to use the shampoo, by all means, we're going to use the shampoo. But I need, Buddy's obviously a Pomeranian, I need a good deep shed going or I can't even give him a good haircut if I don't get the undercoat out the way I need to. So, I just mix her shampoo with my shampoo. Fortunately, her shampoo smells really strong, so she is definitely going to smell it on this dog. <laughs> like, no matter what I use, she's still going to smell it. Um, now, if it was a medicated shampoo or the dog had, like, allergies to certain things or something like that, then I would only use their shampoo. But when I get somebody that gives me something that they just got at PetSmart that I know is like not even like that great of a product or whatever, then I still use my products because I know that anything I have is better than whatever this is. You know what I mean? So that's when I'm kind of like, great, I'll use a little squeeze of yours so that you think I'm using it and that you're happy and then I'll still use what I need to use to make me happy. And if she ever noticed anything like it was like, oh, did you use a conditioner or something on that on him? I'd be like, yeah, I did because I need to be able to loosen that undercoat to be able to do a proper knee shed. Um, and you know, like I said, she he doesn't have specific allergies. She just says that sometimes he gets itchy and she wanted to use something to help. So I also use moisturizing products, which I would do anyway since he's a proper Indian. So anyway, that's. Um, my little tip and trick. Again, if this was a product from a veterinarian, I would use it as directed on the bottle. But since this is like an Amazon shampoo, I'm actually like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm almost positive that she told me she got it on Amazon. So since that's the case, I am just going to um, use a little bit so that it's used and then, you know, use what I need to use to do the job that I need to do. So that way everybody's happy. Okay, uh, another thing I wanted to add is you will notice even with your super regular every six week dogs that like a couple times a year they are just going to have a lot more undercoat packed in than others. Today is that day for Buddy. I can just feel it. It's really thick. There's a lot that needs to come out. So I'm going to condition him today. <laughs> Don't mind the hair already on it. You know how it goes when you're working on a pump. So uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to get a piece of this. Now, the beautiful thing about Pomeranians is it's really hard to over-condition them. But this is a very heavy conditioner, so you can do it, okay? It is doable to over-condition them, so don't overdo it. This is how much I got, okay? Like, I don't know how much to call that. A little over a quarter size amount, maybe. Half dollar amount, okay? And I'm going to apply that to the big shedding areas first. So around the neck, the legs, definitely this back end and tail, that's a definite. And then the last resort, run it through the back and all that. Because this area we know is going to blow out, but we know the areas where the hair likes to stick. Now if you wanted to, you can sit there and brush that through while the conditioner is in. I personally just let it sit and then I let the water brush it out for me whenever I'm ready to rinse. So I am going to let that sit for two minutes. And when I rinse it, I will do the more pressurized rinse setting. So I'm going to turn it like that's normal stream, right? When I go to rinse it, I'm going to do that one. You see how more, how much faster it uh, blows out? It's just going to help to go ahead and start knocking some of the undercoat that's already like loosening up. Now. So basically, we're just going to let it sit for a minute. Um, and while this is happening, I always like clean their ears and all that stuff just to be productive with my time. Alright, so we've got Buddy done. Now, I want to say when you're doing a Pomeranian blowout, I cannot stress enough like how much nicer your groom is going to look if you um, fluff dry them while you're combing. It's kind of like doing a blowout 
right? Like if you were gonna go to a salon and get a blowout, it's like our equivalent of that. So while I'm blow drying, I go over, I start off with a Chris Christensen brush to get all the big uh, undercoat spots and tangles out. And then I drop down, I love this Chris Christensen number 17. You see, it's like a nice big brush. Um, so that's my second line. And once that runs through like butter, then you can go down to an even finer tooth comb, like one of these Ashley Craig combs. Somebody asked me about these the other day. Uh, these were sent to me by somebody that follows me. You guys are really incredible. Every now and then I'll get one of you guys that wants to like give back to me because I show you guys grooming stuff and y'all will send me stuff and like I seriously, I really, really appreciate it. Especially when it's something I use all the time. So anyway, once this one goes through, then you know, you can go down to your super fine tooth. Um, so anyway, I just do that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Buddy is kind of humpy. So first, all, first off, you want to be aware not to hold near that area as to not get him excited. So I'm just holding him here, <laughs> which is hard because he's also one that likes to sit. So again, hand here, trying to avoid his private area. Make sure I got everything. You know how these plums can be. Just gently holding. I'm trying not to apply pressure. Boy. There we go. All right. Just want to make sure these legs are brushed out and fully dried too. Sometimes it's hard for me to make sure that. Like I'll miss a spot or two when they're in the tub, so that's also why I like to do a brush out real quick once I get them on the table, just to make sure there's no damp areas that I could have missed. Especially when I get one that sits a lot, it's really easy, especially back here, to like miss a little spot around their tail or something. So, just checking, looks good. Now, I'm actually gonna, um, on him, for palms for me, I like to start on my feet and like work my way up. Um, mainly because I, I feel like I need the feet done to be able to do the bridges. So, I am just gonna, now some of them are really smart and they know, like he's, he's obviously figured out like if he sits backwards that he can slip out of my hammock. So, I have had people ask me how I do it whenever I get one that's difficult to put in the hammock. And this is what I do. So once this is on here, he will not be able to get out. All right. So now his head is in. That's why I locked that thing back there. Because that's most of them figure out if they step back and slide their head back like that, that they can slip out. Any dog that knows how to slip its collar is going to immediately go for that once they get in the, the hammock. So that's why I put that thing behind. So he can't slip his head out because that's what he's trying to do right now. So, up he goes. And all adjusted in here and I'm just going to slide that down a little bit. Alright, now get my dremel out. Okay. Can you be wiggly? Maybe you'll be a good wiggle dog for me. I still haven't gotten like the right one to like wiggle for a video. So maybe this will be our day. He's typically good for his nails. And turn this up. He's holding his leg backwards, so that's why I'm going like this. I just go with whatever way is comfortable to hold your leg.
he's relaxed, I'm just going to do it like this. Making sure to keep his um, foot close to his body. I forgot to charge my journal, so it's dying. But we're going to use it until it dies. Okay, buddy.
Common too that they'll do that like while you're not actively working on them. That's like when they try to escape. They're like, here's my moment. So anyway, what I'm doing, I'm just gonna go ahead and start trimming some of this while he's in the hammock. Because as you can see, he's pretty wiggly. So I have just learned um, that it's easier for me. In the hammock still, I just have a little more control. I'm just holding um, with my left hand, if you can see, I'm holding this groom, uh, the hound hammock itself. And I'm just holding a little pressure to keep him down on the ground so that he is not uh, 
standing up on his front legs. Try not to touch in that area. It's like he does the horn ball. 
So anyway, I'm going to check his tail and see if he needs anything to go back here today. I like to trim this here. Like that. 
because I used to just be like, oh, let them sit and I'll stand them back up. And like literally some of them will do that with you all day. Like they're like, you know what, I don't have anything better to do. But I do, and I don't want to be here all day. So you're going to have to stand. So like I said, I try to discourage them as much as possible from being able to sit like when I need them standing. And then they have their times that they're able to sit. Jay 
Mike's made a video. Um, let's see, oh, he's doing under the chin. He's talking about like you kind of have to calm or you scissor both ways. And it's a really good point. So I keep that in mind for the rest of the day. Okay, so I'm
one of the vlogs, so um, I may not film as much of the other ones because I've done multiple videos on Skippy's head. So maybe we'll pop in or whatever. I'll show you a couple things with um, Sassy. But like I said, Buddy ended up kind of being a full video on his own. So, but that's okay. I feel like there's a lot of good information in it and a lot of good tricks for these dogs that sit the whole time. So, anyway, I'll be back. <laughs> 